Hey everybody, good evening. Welcome to the live stream. We've got all kinds of cool stuff lined up tonight. Some different stuff that we haven't really uh, dove into before. All right, some new projects, all that. Roger, Roger, good to see you as well, man. I hope you're doing well. Um, hope everything's just hunky-dory in your world. <laughs> all right. Um, we're going to work on some fork ears tonight. That's another thing we're going to do. Um, then I got some projects over here. Might as well show you the new wiring harness. I got a wiring harness for uh, the bike, uh, so we might as well take a look at that. Also got a couple other little projects to kind of unveil tonight. Um, main thing tonight that I'm looking to do, though, um, is really just remove my wheel bearings on both the front and the back wheel. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the good old blind bearing puller, and uh, we'll deal with that. But first, I want to dive into these fork gears. That's kind of the first thing. Um, I've got these awesome large reflectors that I can use on this bike. This one's a little cracked up, but I don't really care um, all that much. It'll just be better than this tiny, teeny one. So I got small ones and big ones. And I want these big ones. I want these big ones on the bike. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, if I switch over to camera one, I can show you the big the issue that I'm having here. Um, the bolts on these two are quite a different size, if you see that quite a very different size. So we're gonna have to tap these out, okay? Because also on this fork gear, and I still need to sandblast and clean this one up, um, somebody actually bondoed over um, the hole. So I was doing some scraping just to make sure that there was actually a spot there. So uh, uh, yeah, it's there. They just bondoed over it for some reason. And that's where this reflector actually went on. Roger, you almost sold your bikes, bought a boat, surrounding up my safety gear. Wow, you sold, wait, you sold all your bikes. <clears throat> Are you living vicariously through the channel then? Is that what you're doing now? You bought a boat, congratulations. Obviously you wanted a boat and uh, to each their own. Good job, way to get a boat. Boat sounds pretty damn cool. You could just float off over the horizon away from all the madness of the world. Doesn't sound like the worst worst idea. Max, thanks for joining in tonight. This is awesome. We got some people already. God, I've only been live for what a minute or so, a few minutes now. God, I've been yeah, I've only been actually live. I, I kind of teased it for a little while. Um, so yeah, good to see everybody in the chat. Uh, don't be quiet. Uh, don't be shy. All right, if you got questions or anything like that, uh, be sure to drop them in the chat, and then we'll try to get to it. I was actually uh, replying to some YouTube comments uh, before I hopped on. And uh, somebody's having a real problem with uh, getting their rubber gaiters on. So, um, you know, uh, if that guy hops in chat, maybe we'll do some of that tonight, too, because it kind of goes in well with kind of some of the front end work that we're doing. You got one bike left. That's all you need. You can only ride one bike at a time, right? So I think you're in good shape there. Change, if, change the direction in life. Hey, we all need that from time to time. Don't blame you. Congratulations on the boat. Be safe, though. Wear a life jacket or at least know how to swim, that helps. Um, I don't know how to swim, so I, I sink. I can't even do a back float. I just panic and I sink. And uh, that'd be really, really, really bad. Max, oh cool, Max, that's you. Well, let's not uh, keep Max waiting. Let me, um, let's see, let me adjust this camera. We'll go into the parts bin um, and see if I can find some parts. All right, so we got some gators over here. And I happen to have a, uh, stanchion right here. So uh, Max, I'm pretty sure that this is what you're talking about. This is what you're struggling with, right? Is this what you're struggling with? If so, let's see if we can figure this thing out. Now I don't have my heat gun laying in front of me right now. Um, but yeah, ideally to get that stuff working, that gator needs to come down to about here. It's got to come into this groove. There's that little groove right here. And another thing you may have your gator on upside down because there should be a little drain hole. Okay, there's a little hole and that little drain hole should be going down. All right, so that drain hole goes down and that's kind of your indicator that this goes right here. Okay, and that should stick right on there. If you look inside here, there is a groove. There's a little groove on the inside here and that groove just happens to mate right up to this spot. Um, let me see, where is, do I have my, I do have my heat gun. Let me grab that. 
I can always take it off again if I need to. Um, let me find some power. I need some power. That is like my biggest struggle down here um, is having enough power to do things. But this is kind of cool. Um, Roger, you can't swim? Can't swim, but you want a boat. All right. Can't swim, but have got a really good self-inflating life jacket ordered, same as the Coast Guard uses. That's badass. And they're kind of low profile, right? I think I know what you're talking about. And when they hit water, um, they'll actually, they'll, they'll inflate. Good. Um, I mean, learn how to swim too. Um, but I, I, just, I just don't think I can learn how to swim. Um, I've, I've failed miserably at it. So, man, congratulations on the boat. Show the boat. Show the bikes that you sold in the group. That would be really cool in the Keep On Wrenching community group. Uh, Roger, uh, kind of show us what you did. Show us what you got, man. I mean, we've been doing a lot of different stuff on that. Um, it hasn't been all just motorcycles. I mean, we have people doing all kinds of stuff over here. We've got people showing us um, their new paved walkway. Rich did an amazing job with his paved walkway. Um, I thought that was pretty darn cool. And he was pretty proud of it, man. That guy was working late into the night laying stone. Uh, that was pretty good. Here he gave us a project, pros, progress updates on that the whole way. Um, we've got, let's see, we've got some auto parts going. If you guys didn't listen to the podcast yet, go listen to the podcast. That was so much fun. Um, I'll uh, talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. Uh, somebody's talking about ultrasonic. Uh, Scott freaking crushed it on this tank. Scott crushed it on this tank. He saved this beautiful Honda tank. Um, that was a huge deal. Um, I painted a fence last weekend. I, I stained my fence. That's going on in the Keep On Wrenching group. We're doing all kinds of randomness. People are doing throwbacks. People are really supporting each other on the group, which I think is amazing. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of activity. It's been a lot of fun here since the last week or so. So yeah, if you haven't done that, go join the Keep On Wrenching group. I'll approve you. And you are in the conversation. That's what it's all about. Okay, back to these gators. Now that I got my, now that I got my heat gun, I got my little promo out of the way for that. Um, we can do that. Oh, the top mount. Oh, top mount. Well, that's good. That's basically the same darn thing. It's just got to flip back over. I don't think I have a top ring. I don't believe I have one of the rings that go around that. Hmm, I thought you said it was the bottom mount. Because, yeah, this one, you just got to heat this up and put this on there. Um, I don't think I have a part to be able to do that right now. Yeah, it'll, it'll inflate. It'll inflate, Roger. It, it, it will inflate. Um, shoot, man, Max. I, I'm just going through all these parts right now. I don't believe that I have that part. The top mount. Okay, wait, back from the, yeah, uh, okay, yeah, I cannot for the life of me get that lip to clear the edge, and it's harder while it's mounted because it's pulling back from the top mount. Okay. <laughs> Hot soapy water, Roger. I think you threw that tip out there uh, one other time, too, and it worked very, very well. I mean, these things, you have to stretch them, from what I remember, you have to stretch them out quite a bit, get them nice and warm, um, but I went on just low heat with my heat gun. And just kind of, okay, wait, I got to make sure I'm heating the right side. Okay, here's my drain hole. That drain hole goes on the bottom. It's going to go over the sanction tube. I can't do it while it's on the bike, and you can't mount it before because of the ears. Um, yeah, totally. It, it kind of has to be on the bike. One thing you might try would be to take like a flat screwdriver um, and kind of get it on one end and then kind of get the other end going and then kind of work that screwdriver around, all right? Well, get them pliable. Like, have you cleaned them? Have you, have you taken the time to put them on, you know, Dawn dish soap and treat them really, really good with a little bit of Armor All? Um, that could be the problem. They just might not, they, they might be super dry. So maybe what I recommend you do is, um, you know, really, I'm trying to make sure I don't get this too hot, but I want it to get kind of really nice and rubbery. Um, but it could just be that they're super dry. Um, maybe just try, try um, get a Ziploc bag big enough to hold it and get some armor all, okay? And then put the thing in the bag and then put your armor all in. So as, honestly, it should just kind of slide right over. Grab this little tool, like I'll just grab this little piece here. I'll just start pulling this over just like this 
and kind of tug it from one end to another, it's hot enough. And then you can just kind of spin it and put it right into place. Just like that. That wasn't too bad. That actually went really, really, really easy. But yeah, it could just be that that rubber is just really dry, you know, but a heat gun will soften it up. But I, I would treat it before you heat it. I would, I would clean it up real nice and, and make sure, um, you know, that, that it's good. Because if it's really dry or maybe really cracky, like, look at this. This should respond. Yours should respond to, you know, pressure. This is nice and soft, you know. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of heat and that thing should slide on there. But I, did you see kind of how I used this little tool and just kind of roped it around there? Uh, a hair dryer could work, but I, 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 I kind of feel like hair dryers are a little, a little low on the heat. Um, I think a heat gun, like getting a real heat gun um, is a real game changer for this kind of stuff. It's just taking it to the next level. You know, here I got to... This is actually a gift from my wife. I think she got this for me on my an on our anniversary. Uh, just a Wagner heat gun. And it's got a low and a high setting. And this thing has been a lifesaver, honestly. Um, I, I, I was using a hair dryer. I was actually using her hair dryer, which is probably why she ended up getting me a proper heat gun. Can't beat a good heat gun. You could give it a try, Max. You could give it a try. You could totally give it a try with the hair dryer, but I would I would actually properly clean it, and I would properly you know um, moisten it. Is that the word to use? I don't know. Treat it uh, with some Armorall. It makes a huge difference. Like these parts here, you know, these were rock solid. These were rock hard when they uh, when they came off the bike. Um, I soaked them in hot water and Dawn, um, cleaned them very very well. I actually let some of this stuff soak. And, uh, and then I came back and I hit them with Armor All, and now they are good as new. Um, also, remember, guys, I soaked them in Armor All overnight. So I left them in kind of, they were submerged in Armor All, and uh, they come out just rubbery and, and absolutely beautiful. So, Max, that's what, I would, that's what I would try to do. I think maybe you need to do a little bit of cleaning and treatment. I, I hope that helps um, in what you're doing because it shouldn't be super hard, um, but I you should be able to get it. Now oh, I got this thing on there. I'm going to take it off because I don't need it on there right now. Lab Rat, good to see you, man. Thanks for hopping in. Yeah, you got to be careful. You don't want to overheat it because um, then you're going to start melting stuff and stuff's going to look kind of kind of bad when you start melting stuff. A little lubrication, Roger, absolutely. That could work out uh, just fine as well. But Max, man, you timed it out perfectly um, leaving that comment because here we are. Um, hopefully that helps and... and um, yeah, I, I hope that helps. Um, yeah, I think you just need to just get it more malleable. Get it malleable so it like uh, wants to go where you want it to go. All right, what are we working on? First project of the night. Let me scooch on over here. All right, so what I need to do is I need to get rid of all this Bondo and all this stupidity that went on this fork gear so that I can mount, you know, this. So that I can mount the larger reflector, instead of the small teeny reflector, I want to put the big reflector on, except again, the, mount, the mounting bolts are a very different size. So I'm going to need to, to get that going. Awesome, Max. Go do it, man. I think it'll work for you. I think you just need to, need, need to go, go about that process, and I think you're going to be good. Happy to help in any way that I can. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to ream out all of this Bondo that is stuck inside these threads with the actual bolt size that does exist. So basically, I'm just gonna clean the threads with this. And if I can read this, it says, my goodness, people make things so small. This says it is a five by 0.8, okay? Now, I don't have the most expensive tools in the world, and you don't need the most expensive tools in the world, as long as you kind of learn how to make them do what you need them to do. Um, this thing just kind of frustrates me from time to time because it doesn't always like to lock in very well. I think that might be good. But I'm just going to go ahead and get this going. And then once I get this good, um, I'll be able to enlarge in this thread and do a little bit better. Because if you don't know, how can I show you this? Can you guys be able to see this? Inside here, there's just a welded nut. There's a nut welded on the inside. There we go. Here, let me turn this light on. This light might actually help illuminate the subject on which we are talking about. 
and there it is. See it? See that right there? It's just a little nut welded on the inside. It's nothing fancy. So all I want to do is clean out the threads, and then I want to enlarge the threads just a little bit. So did the light help, or did it hurt the picture is what I'm curious about. Let me know in the comments, or in the chat, I mean. So I'm just going to start working this through. For some reason, somebody just must not have liked the reflectors, and they just, you know, obviously this is not original paint. And there we go. I'm just going to start using this to clean out these threads. And there it goes through really nice and easy once it gets through. Start pushing that through, clean out those threads. You kind of see it coming through the other side. Man, I'm glad we were able to help Max like right out of the gate, man. That was a fantastic light help. Perfect. I'll leave the light on, man. The light is a little bit much when I'm on this camera, though. Is it a little much? Maybe not when I wear a baseball hat, but when I'm not wearing a baseball hat, it's a little bit too intense. So we'll leave the light. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it on. No, I, I don't really care. Whatever you guys want, you let me know. Pull this thing out. Now you can see. Those are nice and clean now. Got to remember, my zoom works best when I just move slowly towards things. Oh, I had it. Whew, come on, baby. Automatic focus, a blessing and a curse. But we've got them there. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this bit. Take out this one. Hey, T, how are you, man? I'm hanging in there. Um, day late on the stream. Um, had some work travel that I had to do. Um, but I'm back. And I want to get a little bit of work done tonight. So thanks for joining in tonight. It's awesome. I'm just going to go up. Um, what size is this? This is 5 by 1. Uh, no, 6 millimeter by 1.0. So this is a six by one. Yeah, the light helped me read that part <laughs> a little bit easier too. Now this might be a little bit tough going, um, but we should be able to just thread this out, just get this going. It's small enough, it's not that big of a change. Um, so I'm just gonna start working this through. You just wanna go slow and keep it really steady. Keep it, you know, what would it be? It'd be perpendicular? No, parallel? No, it'd be perpendicular Yeah, to what you're doing. And once it grabs, you're going to be able to just slowly kind of turn this thing in. Now, I did one of these earlier, and the nut actually came free of its weld. Um, and this time, my, my uh, tool actually came free of my bit. And it looks like it broke that weld, too. So same deal, but no, no big deal, because all I'm going to do is walk over to the tool board. Man, it is so freaking nice. Um, I'm still in love with this whole lavalier thing. Really frees me up on what we're doing. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to grab this. And yeah, I think it's an 11. Yeah, it's an 11. So I'll be able to pull that out. Then we can get this thing. I don't know why this thing. It's just, I think it's just cheap. Bought myself a really cheap little tool to get a job done. And um, I mean, it's not something that I'm using like every day. You know, it's just kind of comes in handy in a pinch, so ain't no big deal. Then I can come back out here, get this around there, and I can slowly start to back this out. That came out just like that. You can already see threads are cutting in really, really nice. I'm just going to grab my vice grips. Give this just a little bit of a turn here, I think. Get that held in here. Not too tight that you're putting too much pressure on everything, but tight enough. Give this thing another freaking turn so I can get through. I've got to get through this whole bolt or this whole nut. So I'm going to be real careful not to screw up the threads that I already got on there. I'm just going to follow this through. Cut this out. Just got to go slow. I think that's the key is just go slow with it and try not to get it all tippy on you so you ruin the threads that you're cutting as you're going through. They're a little bit tapered. So it kind of gets, gets kind of easier as you get to a certain point. Like there, here, can you see I'm like kind of through now? Kind of starting to go through. So now I'm finally, I'm pushing my way through. And boy, does this stuff, it'll, it'll pull itself right through. And there you go. Can you guys see that? Got to tilt it just a little bit so you can see. I'm all the way through and now I've kind of tapped that. I believe that's the proper term is tapping. And now look at that. Boom. Easy going. All right. So it's kind of tough for a little while, and then it just gets really easy to go back through. So then just on your way out, just be really careful. 
Be careful coming back out. And we can go like this. Pull that out. Handy freaking little tool, man. It'll save you. And now this should, in theory, this should screw right onto this bad boy. And it does. Doo -doo -doo. Perfect. Perfect. That is going to work out just, just fine. It's a little bit crooked. <laughs> But who cares, all right? So I still need to sandblast all this stuff, all right? Um, but it's going to fit. It's going to fit just fine. Um, the rubber piece is going to go on here. This piece is going to slide right onto there, just like that. I'm going to have a big reflector on here. And then I'm going to have my little nut go onto here. Oops. Let's go. Oh, and I dropped it. Where'd it go? It doesn't matter. I'm going to have to take it off anyway. Oh, God. Never ends. There. It's like so clean and perfect. Bam. There you go. That's how you do it. It's going to look cool. It's going to look really cool. Um, I'm happy with how that all turned out. So, yeah, we have worked our way through the first project because I already did the first one. I already did the first one. I did the first one to make sure that my theory was correct. And you know what? My theory was correct. It worked out just fine. All right, let's go back over here. I'll show you the other one. And where is it here? Right here. And uh, I'm still debating on what color, on uh, what color we're gonna actually do the bike. Um, still torn. There's a big part of me that would like to do like black, um, like kind of a gloss black I would like to do. Um, I'm really torn, man. I mean, we should almost do a poll since you guys are hanging out on the stream um, and kind of watching this whole project. You guys kind of are invested in the project, too. I wouldn't be opposed um, to having you guys have an input on the color. Bam. How's that? Bam. Look at that. Oh, my God. Blinded by the light. It's amazing. So that's pretty cool. Oh, I got to tilt this back down so we can see what we're working on next. All right. I feel good about that. So this is just going to go into the little toolbox. Um, I only have one that kind of prompted me. And also, this is the one off of the fire bike. So this one is all melted, all melted up really, really, really bad. So um, kind of sucks that a lot of those parts, the more I'm kind of watching, um, some of them aren't too good. I have been having a real struggle trying to find like the, the, enough right fork parts um, in order to kind of finish stuff up. So I'm just going to put that in the tray um, and we'll go from there. But yeah, easy enough, man. You can tap this stuff out. You know, this is all, all it is. is a whole series of stuff. I think the kit was, I don't know, I think it was five, ten bucks on Amazon. Uh, Roger, I am in the state of Michigan. So if you know where the Great Lakes are, um, Michigan's the big mitten looking state. I am in the state of Michigan. Northern, northern, like they call it. So they call Michigan the Midwest. I really think that Michigan, though, now keep in mind, I come from Minnesota, all right? That's where I grew up in Minnesota. I live in Michigan now. Um, Michigan to me is, should be considered like Mid East, you know, instead of Midwest. I think it, they stretch that a little bit. So I think it, it should be like Mid East. You, you kind of see what I'm saying there? Um, but they call it uh, Midwest, and uh, yeah, I don't know. If you look at a map, it's more on the east than it is on the west, but you know, what the hell do I know? So anyway, I, I'm done with my tap set. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not done with my tap set, because if we go over here, we got all kinds of goodness happening over here, and I'm going to need my tap set again tonight, I think. Let's see. Yeah, this one was too small. We're going to need this tap in order to deal with some of this, so... Let me go ahead and get a light going over here. I think this might help our endeavor a little bit tonight. Let's lighten this up. Mid north, yeah, lab rat. Yeah, that, that would work too. I mean, I mean, we're north. I mean, it, I guess it depends. I, I, I just kind of lean on that mid east thing. You know, I was just like, really? I don't know about that. Um, I don't know if you should, you're really Midwest, but. Again, I, I don't, I don't really care. It looks like a mitten and everybody calls it a mitten. And then, so the state, okay, see if I can get my Michigan right. Cause I'm kind of a 
a transplant. So here's the state of Michigan, all right? So I kind of live like right here. So if you look at the mitten, I kind of live down here. That's where, that, that's where I live. <laughs> so whatever. Okay. So let's get the tap. I'm going to clean up this tap here, get this bit ready to go. Because we're going to need it as we go and tear into these bearings tonight. Um, I'm still kind of playing a little bit of puzzle work with a lot of uh, fork parts. Um, I'm kind of, I've got so many different sets of forks and there's, li I'm noticing all of these little variations um, between everything. Yeah, Labra, it doesn't make any sense. It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And we should have a Mideast, you know, we should have a Mideast designation for our states. Okay, before we go and do the wheel, I am going to, I might need my vice grip. So I'm going to put those back on the board just in case I need them. <sighs> Let's take a look at this wiring harness. So I, I really can't speak more highly about Spark Moto. Spark Moto does full re replacement, excuse me, replacement wiring harnesses. And they're really freaking good. I'm gonna hide my address here. So this was $119, all right? And this is a, a full wiring harness for um, a CB motorcycle or a CL, same difference. Same wiring harness went into my CL. Uh, Mike, I have a 79 Honda CM400. I took off a bunch of parts and I also have two sets of dual carbs for a similar bike, two sets of CV carburetors that need to be real, but are all there. Um, that's amazing. 70 and a Honda CM. I'm wondering, I bet those are really different carburetors from what I'm working on on this bike. Um, but dude, having a ton of carbs, I think I have eight carburetors at this point and I'll probably be able to make two carburetors out of all the parts that I've got. <laughs> they're, they're like that finicky. Um, and if anybody in the chat needs those carburetors, I mean, hit Mike up. He's got a bunch of them. Back to the wiring harness, man. These things are rock freaking solid. Brand new wiring. The wire colors are all consistent with everything you're going to see on all of the different components. So, you know, if you're watching stuff, you know that these orange wires, you know, these are going to be, you know, your lights and all these different things. The color um, is all there. And it all is built with all the factory connectors as well. So everything plugs right in together. Awesome, Mike, that is awesome. Hey, you should post about that. You should actually post about that in the Keep On Wrenching group. Um, just go join the group if you haven't already and uh, go ahead, let me get to the top. I gotta go back to the top, I'm scrolling. Um, go join this group and go post about it. I don't care um, if these parts are needed by some people um, let's make them available. So keep on wrenching community group. Um, go ahead and join. Uh, we don't see any member requests yet. I can refresh here real quick. Um, but if you haven't joined yet, uh, please join the group, man. It's a lot of fun. I've been having fun, uh, watching all this stuff for sure. So keep on wrenching community group. So here we go. Um, all the wiring harness is all lined up. Your fuse is all built in and it, it is two length exactly how it should be. Um, Spark Moto. I thought they gave me a sticker so you guys can see their logo. Um, they were on sale recently. I'm not sure if they are still on sale or not, but they were on sale for like 99 bucks. So I wasted 20 bucks. I bought at the wrong time. Um, but Spark Moto makes these kits and they are very, 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 very good. Um, in the kit that I got, I also picked up um, I bought it as a kit, so I, you can buy the wiring harness separate or you can get a kit. So I just got the kit because I was like, ah, screw it, I'm going to need it anyway. Um, so here we got a flasher relay in the kit, brand new. Now it's very different from the stock original, the little gray box, um, but it does the job. Okay, so we got our flasher relay, we got a brand new one. Um, the cool thing is, is that it does have the right mount on it right here. Um, so it will slide right on to the mount that we have. Um, on Facebook, Mike, on uh, Facebook. That is where you will find the Keep On Wrenching group on Facebook. Sorry, I should have mentioned that. 
And then the other thing is we got ourselves a regulator rectifier from Spark Moto as well. So was this the whole kit? Was the whole kit... Oh, shoot, that was the whole kit. The whole kit, the basic refurb kit was 119. So this is actually a hell of a deal. Um, got a, a rectifier uh, regulator combo. Now this is a big, this is an upgrade you should probably con, con, uh, go, to, go, uh, go do on your bike. Um, Mike, just uh, go to Facebook and uh, type that in. Go, uh, go to Facebook, go to the search bar and type keep on wrenching community group um, and uh, it should pop up and then you can ask to join and then uh, go ahead and get, get, get on it. It'd be awesome, welcome to the community. Um, so this is awesome. So we've got kind of our electronics really squared away. It also comes if, if your wiring is all bashed up and dead, um, it's got fresh connectors for you. So uh, awesome, thanks Mike, I, I appreciate that man. And spread the word about the channel. I've been having a blast with these live streams. It's been super fun. So for $119, 100% fresh wiring, um, for the um, for the apocalypse bike, I think that that hundred and nineteen dollar investment is really a good thing because otherwise we are taking our chances on this. Here's the original wiring harness out of that bike, and how much do we want to bet? that if we start putting this back in the bike, you know, we're gonna have issues. Pretty sure we're gonna have some issues, okay? I can already see um, wires, dirty connectors, number one. Dirty connectors will keep you chasing problems all day long. Um, so here's the original harness, okay? Here's another issue. We got fraying wires on our fuse. That ain't no good. Um, what, other, what other kind of little stuff can we see? Now, could this be cleaned and salvaged? Absolutely, absolutely. I don't know if you can replace those sealed beams. I, I think you have to just replace the entire unit, Mike, if I remember right. Maybe somebody in the chat would know. Um, I think those sealed beams, I don't think that you can change any of that. You're gonna have to upgrade. Yeah, it's, it's bad, right, Roger? Like, I think you're just gonna be chasing gremlins if you don't change out the wiring. Like this is dirty. Like, you know, I'm just wiping this and now my thumb's dirty. <laughs> and all of these connectors, like here, we've got a, got a busted up connector here. That's no good. That, that, that's no good. That, that's going to cause you problems down the road um, for sure. So um, I was looking at this and I was just like, look, for $119, we upgrade to a new wiring harness. We get a regulator rectifier and we get our flasher relay done in one fell swoop. And again, all the colors match. I wonder if I could find like an example of where this all goes. But anyway, all the colors match. Like even on this one, you can barely even tell what colors are what. <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, you, hey, Mike, I'm pretty sure that if you, you can buy a lens that you can use your original bucket for, but I don't think you can like take your sealed lens apart and put an LED in it. I, I, I don't know if I've seen that, um, but it, I have seen them where they fit the original bucket. So I think you're, you're, you're gonna be okay. Um, let's do this. So yeah, what do you guys think? I think it's pretty damn cool. And a freaking sticker, Lab Rat. And a, freaking, and, and a good quality sticker. I mean, look at that. It's a thick sticker. It's not one of those cheap stickers. It feels really good in your hand. You know, it's got some durability to it. I could flick it across the room or something. But yeah, it's a good, I like their logo. They've been around since two, uh, 2013 apparently on that. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be really, really, really cool. So I'm gonna, I gotta do something cool with the sticker. I gotta do something cool with the sticker. And then if you guys remember when we unboxed all the parts, I was lucky enough um, to have the previous owner of this bike buy um, the uh, new ignition. So this bike will have a new ignition, a new regulator rectifier, a new wiring harness, and a new flasher, okay? Now, I'm gonna, I think, I'm, I, I, I've spent a lot of money on coils before. Coils are freaking expensive. I think they're like 50 or 60 bucks each, and you need two of them, so that's another $120. Um, between all the different bikes that I've had, um, 
I mean, I've probably got 10 coils laying around here. So I bought, I wonder if I could spy this out real quick. I bought a book. Yeah, here. So I bought another book because I'm not an electrical person. So I bought this book, right? Electrical tech book for motorcycles. And it shows you how to test everything and, uh, and uh, go. So I'm probably gonna test all of those different coils that I've got, find a good set and go from there. So Brian, uh, be right, keep original bucket and bowl and get a newer type reflector unit. Yep, you can sell them. I think, I'm pretty sure Common Motor has them. I think I've seen them there, just that unit. Uh, you just wanna make sure it's the right diameter um, for whatever you're buying. So um, yeah, I'm excited. Got a book. Okay, electrical, tech book, motorcycles. That should help me test out all of these different coils that I've got. So then I'll know I have good coils. I'll have brand new spark plugs. I got those, I got brand new wiring, a brand new ignition with keys, <laughs> which is nice because none of them ever come with keys and none of them ever come with titles. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be good. But I still got all this and I don't wanna throw it away. I'll hold on to it and uh, it'll all be good, right? It'll all be good. Um, I really haven't seen other things that have needed to be replaced. Um, I'll, I'm, I'm still waffling, honestly, as to whether or not I'm going to go with an electronic ignition on this. It being the apocalypse bike, I would like to run points on it, uh, just because an electromagnetic pulse would not render the bike useless. Um, you know, the electronic ignitions, if they get hit by an EMP from either the sun or a terrorist entity, um, would... Um, not be good for electronic ignition. So points would actually still run. Um, so just for the same deal, um, I, I might do that. And I've never, and I've actually never really gotten a bike running well on points. My 1970 CB, I had that running on points for a while, but it kind of just ran like garbage. Um, I mean, not garbage, it ran, uh, but it didn't run really, really, really good. So um, yeah, I, I don't know. And plus the electronic ignitions are freaking expensive. They're like $200. That's a $200 upgrade. That's a major upgrade uh, in my mind for these bikes. Um, and I have a bunch of different parts uh, laying around for points units as well. Oh, Mike's in. Let's get Mike into the group. Let me hop over there real quick. We'll get him approved into the group. Boom, Mike Egger. All right, you're in. All right, post responsibly and uh, be a good community member and we'll have some fun because we've been sharing all kinds of cool stuff. It's not all about motorcycles, but I'm telling you, if, if people are working on those 400s and you have some carburetors, um, could be really cool. Yeah, the, the group has been a lot of fun this week. People have been really posting and doing that. So again, if you haven't signed up for the uh, Keep On Wrenching community group on Facebook, um, go ahead and go do that. What, what are you waiting for? There, there's no reason to wait, so awesome. Um, yeah, the, um, yeah, or <laughs> Roger, valid point. I didn't want to go there, but you went there with the government agency EMP. Absolutely. Um, I have seen a lot of 24 and Jack Bauer and, uh, yeah, that stuff is pretty, pretty real. Um, of their LED lights, LED lights. What are we referring to here? Uh, um, common motor video. Did they do one on, uh, on LEDs? Possibly, they do a ton of videos too. Um, I've got a bunch of videos. I think I'm gonna do a video. This is a perfect segue actually. So Mike, thank you. To show you something that I think I'm gonna do tonight. Or not, not tonight, <laughs> not gonna do it tonight. But to show off a couple of things that I have acquired. So if you guys remember from the last stream, if you remember from the last stream, I picked up those gasket templates. And I'm really excited to start using these. I think these are really, really cool. And over time, these are gonna save me a ton of money, right? But there were all kinds of holes. And the idea of sitting around cutting holes in these with an X-Acto knife seemed pretty miserable. So I went and got like a leather punch set and it's got a whole variety of different punches in it. And I can go through and punch whatever sized holes that I'm gonna need in these different gaskets. It's, it's actually fantastic. And most of it's fitting damn well perfect 
in some of these holes. So I can go back over here if I need this. Oh, this one's like perfect. Bam, tap that out and it comes through. If you look, how can I show you this? Pops through on the other side. It's just enough to cut that gasket material and get those perfect, perfect, perfect holes for each one of these templates. So this was like literally a $5 leather punch set um, on Amazon. And it came with, I think, 12 different bits. And you know, it's got small ones for some of these smaller holes. That might be a little bit too small, but it'll work perfect for this one right back over here. It'll work perfect for that one. Um, so I think among all of this, I'll be able to go, go around and punch the holes, cut the, cut the, uh, the gasket material that I'm gonna need and it's going to be really, really easy. This I'm really excited to start diving into this thing. But I think this was also worth five dollars uh, to get that little punch set um, to just make cutting all those holes a little bit easier. And then, of course, in order to cut all those damn holes, I needed to get myself a little cutting mat and a bunch of Exacto blades and some so a steel ruler and all that. And again, this is like. I don't know how the hell we're able to manufacture all this stuff so damn cheap today. I, I, I really don't. It's, it's pretty crazy. Um, I haven't even opened this yet. I don't know if I need to open it, but it's got a ton of X-Acto blades. It's got a bunch of different knives. It's got a little cutting mat. I, I think this was like 12 bucks, 12 bucks. So yeah, this is gonna be great. Together with this, I think I got everything I need to start going crazy with some gaskets once we get to um, that engine and we start tearing into stuff there. So that's a little new additions to the shop. I'm just constantly purchasing um, stuff. But then here's the thing I'm kind of excited about. And I'm gonna probably make a video about this this weekend, okay? Um, hey, Tula, Tula Tom, thanks, thanks for coming in, dude. Good to see you again. Uh, we're just going through the purchases from the previous week. Um, you know, we got ourselves a leather punch set to punch out gasket material holes, so those are all perfect. We got ourselves our X-Acto knife kit and cutting mat so we can make a whole bunch of gaskets. And, all right, so this was just a purchase out of complete curiosity, okay? Um, I have a sandblasting cabinet, I have a sandblaster, all right? And the la if you guys watch the video series, um, I sandblasted the motorcycle frame. Okay, the, la the last time I did that. So I took the sandblaster out of the cabinet and I just went in my backyard and I sandblasted the cabinet. Um, now I have a small air compressor. It's really small. It's like a one horsepower 25 gallon or something like that. It takes forever. Um, it works, it totally works, um, but it's like three minutes of, um, you know, three minutes of working time to like seven minutes of charging time. So I'm constantly, I go, 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 go. I lose my pressure, then I gotta wait for the pressure to build back up. So just for the hell of it, just to see if it was gonna work, this is what I picked up. A little sand blaster gun. And it will do a lot of different things. It'll do silicon soda, glass, steel, sand, pumice, walnut shells, and it'll also do aluminum oxide, okay? It'll do a lot of things. This thing was really cheap, okay? It was like, 50 bucks, okay, 50 bucks for this. Now, what I like about it is that it has the hopper built right into it, okay? Um, I can fill it up with whatever I want. I don't have to drain the whole damn thing. Um, awesome, thanks, Mike, and everybody go check out the posts on uh, the Keep On Wrenching Facebook page, or the, uh, yeah, Keep On Wrenching community page, and uh, see what he's got, got to sell, he's got some stuff. Transfer punches are a great way for making holes accurately too and, and drill the hole out. Yeah, I didn't want to drill the stuff out though, Roger, because uh, I didn't want to risk messing up my template. Um, so I just kind of wanted a quick little punch to be able to, to, to do that. And I, I, I don't know, I think these leather punches are gonna work out just fine. But anyway, got the, got the sand blaster and uh, I have a full blown one. And I just wanted to see. So I'm gonna do a video this weekend to see if this is worth 50 bucks. So let's kind of open it right now. I'll pack it back up and do a video on it. it there ain't much to it, it's pretty damn light. It's in here. Oh, oh my goodness, they give you a free pair of glasses. I would actually rather have sealed goggles actually though when I'm, when I'm sandblasting other, other than um, you know open, open face like that. 
Um, so yeah, here we go. Here it is. It's pretty light. There's not much weight to this thing. But what I'm hoping is that it's going to help me just be a little bit more mobile. Okay, it's all plastic. This is all plastic. That's a little disappointing. Could be at least a cheap metal. Um, okay, so it's got a little adjuster here for flow and a little hopper. Now, I, this could work out really great for small parts. Oh, cool, it's got a little filter screen built right into this. Any of you guys ever use one of these? Ever see one of these? I'd be curious because I've been, my Instagram has actually been blowing up with these for about a year. And I finally kind of caved and was like, okay, fine, I'm gonna do it. Now this hooks up to my air compressor, so I'll use some Teflon tape and all that, get this all cleared up really good. And this will plug right into my air compressor, but I do think that my little air compressor with this might be able to do a little bit better job because I've got a full blown um, sandblasting cabinet and you know the real gun, the, the normal thing, and I drain it so fast. So I'm kind of curious to see if I can get a little bit more precise and, and make some, some good time. Now it's made in Taiwan and I can scan that QR code to go ahead and watch the tutorial. Um, but I'm, I'm very curious to see if it holds up. I mean, if it does what it does on the videos, one thing I could tell, one thing I could totally tell on the videos when they're showing like how this thing worked, um, they, sh they, the videos of the thing working were sped up. They were sped up probably like three times and it made it look like the guy was like just plowing through uh, the sheet metal, but you could totally tell that it was like totally sped up and all that. So I'm, I'm not expecting this to be, um, you know, amazing by any means, but if it's functional it, and, you know, sandblasting a motorcycle frame isn't that much surface area. So if this can get the job done, it's worth a shot. It's worth 50 bucks. I'll give it a try. Um, this, I'm a little concerned. This, this is a plastic trigger here. Got to be kind of careful with it. I wouldn't want to like drop it on the ground or anything. You might break that because uh, there's a little metal pin. Or I can show you over here. It's a little metal pin. It's, it's not even a pin. It's just like a rivet in there. Um, but I'm very curious. I think it'll work really well with some fine blasting material. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give that a whirl. So I just thought, what the hell? Why not try it? Um, it, 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 it? If it can beat my three minutes working time to seven minute charge time, um, I'm all for it because sandblasting has been very painful. Um, I just need to invest in a upgraded sand uh, air compressor is what I really need to do. But Oh boy, air compressors are extremely, extremely expensive. So let's take a look at some of this information. Oh my goodness, this looks very fancy. It comes with a 12 month warranty. I don't even believe that. I need to register it. I, hey guys, have you guys noticed QR codes are back, baby? Um, I'm so happy that QR is back. I was a huge advocate of QR uh, back when it was first rolling out in like 2000, I don't know, when was it? 2008, 2009, it was coming out. Uh, but now the scanners are built into our phones, so into our phone camera, and you can scan this stuff all day long. Visit this page to get a free filter. Oh, so they're giving me a free filter as well. Perfect, perfect. All right, I will actually try that. Hey, a one-year warranty on, a, on something like this? I'll take it, man. If it breaks, I'll bring it back. So it's the model AS118. All right, that's what it is. Color blue for reference only. Here's all the different parts. And I would like to see, okay, so here's how it hooks up. Hey, I like the picture. The picture has a really small little air compressor in it. That's very similar to what I kind of have to be able to do all this. And da, 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 I don't know what the hell's going on here. Oh, the, oh, these are all the different valves. Okay, hose, and then we just plug it right in. So I've got that all set up. But I wanted to see like the operating pressures is what I wanted. Okay, so it's got a guide for all the different media um, that you can use. So I'm gonna have to read all that. Gonna have to read, folks. Gonna have to read a little bit. Grit to mesh conversion. I have no idea what the hell that means. Um, let's see, I just wanted to see like it's operating. Maximum pressure 150 PSI. Air consumption 7 CFM at 90 PSI. And I found that I kind of need, 
I find that I kind of need, um, you know, at least, at least like, 70 to 90 PSI to do a lot of the sandblasting I'm needing. Once I kind of fall below like 55 or so, um, it takes a long time to do stuff. But when I've got good pressure between like 70 and up, I do really, really good. So I don't know, I'm optimistic. It's worth a try. I don't want to lose these registration cards. I'm going to definitely register the product in case it, it goes, uh, you know, goes sideways on me and we can deal with that. So I don't know, I think it's cool. What do you guys think? Think it's worth a shot or do you think I just wasted $50? I'm just so curious. And plus I'm always looking for, uh, I'm always looking for stuff to just kind of showcase on the channel and mess around. I bet you guys have seen um, these uh, YouTube ads because the ads, boy, the frequency was running at a very high, very, very high rate. Oh, not quite the parts you're looking for. Hey, they will come, they, they will show up. The parts you need, will show up when it, the time is right. You cannot force parts to show up when you need them. You got, they, they, they're just like little unicorns. They, they will appear when they are ready. And when they appear, you will be thankful. All right, so we got all kinds of good stuff. I, I, I need to dive into this book. I, I, out of all of this, just don't drop it, right, Roger, right? Out of all the things that I'm working on on these motorcycles, I do think electrical is my biggest weak spot. Um, I can match colors, I can do all of those things, um, but I'm not 100% positive what the hell is going on most of the time, be honest with you. Um, so yeah, so there's that wiring harness that we talked about, our Ron regulator rectifier and all of that is over there. Good to go. I feel really good about this purchase for the 350. Uh, I think it's going to save us a lot, a lot, a lot of headaches on the channel for sure. So up on the new parts area, that's going to go. And uh, this stuff could just kind of come over here for now. I don't really need it. I think we got to get to work. I think we got to get to the real project of the night. Okay. And that is using some tools that I really enjoy actually using. So uh, let's get to it. Again, we're gonna need our little uh, tap tool in order to do it. Let me know if the light's too bright. I can adjust the light, make it look a little bit better. Um, we've got a rear bearing to get out because this side doesn't even have a bearing <laughs> for some reason. Doesn't even have a bearing. I think it just fell out, which ain't a good sign. But here's something that if you're pulling bearings, I think that this is almost required. Um, this tool really did change my life quite a bit. Um, if you've ever tried to remove bearings before um, on these bikes or on a motorcycle wheel in general, um, a lot of people will take like a punch, like one of these little punches, and try to go inside the edge and just like tap, 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 tap these, these bearings out, okay? Um, and it doesn't work. Okay, it's uh, there's not enough kind of edge space for you to really get a handle on it. So the proper way to do it is to use what they call is a blind bearing puller. All right, so this is basically just a big heavy ass weight right here. Okay, and on the end of it, you have this kind of expanding tool that opens up as you tighten it and you can actually grab the inside of the bearing. Now, this tool actually blew my mind the first time that I saw it. Um, I was just like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Um, that is amazing. I need to buy one. Uh, because I was wasting hours and hours and hours trying to get bearings out of these damn wheels. So, let's see. Let's see if we can get a bearing out. Looking at our front wheel here, let's go for the back one. This would be a good example one to look at. Let me get you down on the process here just a little bit more. Love how fast we can move cameras here. Yeah, it's a slide hammer puller, um, but I've also heard them called blind bearing pullers. Um, so I think, it, I think either one is going to be good. Um, we can call them whatever we will. I call it a miracle tool. This one's a little bit too big for the job. So I can go over to this one, and hopefully we can expand this one just enough to be able to pull this out. And again, the thing just 
tightens up and it should expand and hopefully we can get that to expand enough to where we can get it going. So I got to find a couple little wrenches here, figure out which sizes these were. I don't even remember. Are they 17? Yes, it's a 17 and this. So the whole thing kind of just screws together like this. All right, we'll take this end. This was a game changer though, man. I spent hours and hours and hours trying <laughs> to get my bearings out on my last bike, trying to use the, uh, trying to use a freaking punch and it just was not happening. I need one more adjustable wrench so I can get a little bit of action on it. I'm actually going to grab a pair of gloves too because this stuff gets a little greasy. I don't want this grease all over my hands. Mike, your bike is running and riding. It has 5,600 miles on it. That's why I'm only putting new parts on it. Not because... I'm an ass, but I'm trying to get it. No, you're not an ass for putting new parts in your bike, man. We're trying to restore these bikes. Kind of the whole goal. Make them safe and reliable and good. And we do what we can. I mean, you kind of work with what you got. If you got the means, do it, dude. Ain't no big thing. Okay, so let's do this. Let's even get this dropped in here. Hold my adjustable wrench. And what you want to do is just kind of look for the area where this is like literally like the fourth or no, this would be like the fifth time that I've used this tool ever. Ah, Mike, it's all good. I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're hanging out and you're part of the community. I'm enjoying it. See if I can get this thing to go. Oh my God. I need this thing to cooperate. I need all these different things to cooperate. And this is going to be an 18 millimeter now. Ah. <sighs> Better not go to 18, any bigger than 18, because I ain't got a wrench for that. I ain't got anything bigger than 18 on me. Oh, I'm gonna have to go backyard mechanic style on this stuff. I'm gonna have to go to just adjustable wrenches. That's like it. That's... Don't judge me. Don't judge me, guys. Let's get this tightened on there. Then we're gonna see if we can actually get this thing expanded enough to do that. All right. So that is locked in. I should be able to do this, tighten this one, and grab my 17, and expand this. It doesn't have to expand very much. You just want to get it down in there. But holding this whole damn, th damn thing is kind of challenging. Might be a little bit too far. Yeah, but it went a little bit too light on that. Should have gave her one more little torque. I think I could have got it. But yeah, um, this freaking beats um, having to do it any other way. Again, this tool wasn't that expensive. I think it was like $30 on Amazon. Again, worth every penny. Let's see if I can give you a little bit backed up look here, just so you can see how this works, because it is kind of interesting how the whole damn thing works. It's like that. Hope that works. See if we can pull this bearing out. I think it should be good. Oh, but still not hard enough. Still not deep enough on that one. I gotta go a little bit further on that. Oh well, let's keep trying. Let's keep trying. That's all we can do. So all we can do, ladies and gentlemen, is just keep on trying. So I'll loosen this up just a little bit. Key is to like get, what I'm noticing is that the key to this is to like get this thing right in the right spot, right on the bottom of that bearing, right there, okay? Getting your wrench on a spot, oops, getting your wrench on the spot where you can actually hold it with your one hand and then get this wrench around this side and then kind of pivot it around. 
Let's see if we can do this. I made it look a lot easier in my YouTube video. But in that instance, you really you get the benefit of editing, which I didn't do a whole ton of, but I did edit. I did edit from time to time. Not gonna lie. I feel like that should be good enough. Well, I'll just keep going. It can't hurt. It can't hurt nothing. And just gotta kind of work them around till it all works out. Oh, I got a big update on my computer. I gotta close this window. I can't see what the hell you guys are doing. iTunes, what are you trying to update iTunes for? Who cares about that? Hmm, Tula, that's actually a really good idea. If I fail this time, I'm gonna do that. Eh, it moved. It, surprisingly, it did move. But I'm making all kinds of noise. I'm glad I started the stream early. I'm glad I started the stream early because if I was doing this at like, you know, super late at night, that'd be bad. I would feel bad. I would slightly feel bad. You know, that I was getting a little too, a little too noisy. Let's heat it up. Let's do it. I will listen to you guys and uh, let's heat it up. I actually just spin this around just a little bit. God, this thing is rusty. Can you guys see? Oh, can you guys see how damn rusty this is? I'm gonna set that. Stay there. Get you guys a view of how rusty this head is right here. It's bad. It's no good. I feel good about the grip I've got on that on that blind bearing puller or the what, what was the other term somebody used it? Uh, slide hammer. The slide hammer. That works too. Let's heat it up. I love you guys' suggestions. Yeah, I think I can just soak this in a Vaporest Tula. I, I think I can just do that. Heat gun, again. You know, I think I would put heat gun probably in my top five. Yeah, freezing, Roger, freezing the bearing upon re-entry, absolutely. That does help a lot. But yeah, I think the heat gun, the heat gun um, would probably be in the top five tools that I would recommend that people have uh, in their arsenal when they are working on these bikes. It just comes in so handy for a variety of different things. I got to find a bin big enough. I got to find a bin big enough to drop these rims in because who knows, I might drop this thing into Evaporust and the actual spokes might not look that bad. And if I can polish them up again, this is the apocalypse bike. We're trying to do an, a, an economy kind of a build. Um, I might not have to, you know, muck around with it too much. I'm very curious. I just need to find a bin enough. I think I got enough of apple rust to do the job. I think I got enough of apple rust to do it. I'm just going to heat this, heat this thing up. Not really smelling anything crazy yet, which is good. Probably getting really close to being able to do it. Oh, a kid's pool. Um, you know, I wonder if they make like um, oil pans, like drain, oil drain pans, like big enough that would maybe fit this. Like I just got to measure the size see how big it needs to be. But I was kind of thinking like finding some sort of a, a pan that somebody would use for like a, a big truck when you're draining oil or something. A spare wheel cover for a four by four. Hmm. Like what, what do you mean wheel cover? What do you mean like a, like a hubcap? What do you mean by that? I'm not sure. All right, we are heating, we are heating. It's warm, it's not hot.
Tula. If you find something, let me know what you bought. The inside of my rims need a good soaking too. I'm uneasy about taking off all the rust with a bench grinder. I don't want removing aluminum. Yeah, um, on my last, um, my last one, um, I did just take them out to the, uh, the wire wheel and cleaned them out really, really good. Um, I didn't notice any major issues with doing that. Um, it's possible that I fucked them up. <laughs> it's possible. I don't know. Um, but it seemed to work out okay. I did get some, some newer, uh, or brand new uh, wire wheels. Um, and I got some fine wire wheels. And I actually have a brass one on the way. So I'll have a nice soft wire wheel that I can work with on some of this stuff when I get really paranoid about leaving any kind of a scratch or, or anything like that. So I don't know. I say let's go for it. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I think the bearing, the, the, uh, bearing puller is good enough. There, it's coming right out. Guys, good call on the heat. There you go. Popped right out. Yep. Don't even waste your time without heat. That is a wonderful tip. And then inside here is our spacer. Look at that old grease. That's some old grease right there. Yeah. Yeah, I had a steel tool. I had a, 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 I have a steel wire wheel. I um, was able to knock that out. So there's our, there's our old bearing. We got that out. Heat is definitely the way to go. Note to self and note to you if you're watching the stream. Um, good call on that. Heat just made it come out like butter. Like butter. Like butter. It was awesome. It was good. And we can take this out. We just loosen it just a little bit. And now we can pull our bearing right off. Set that aside. And now we can move over to this other side, which can be a little bit tricky. Which can be a little bit tricky sometimes. There's the inside of that wheel. Yummy. I mean, I could right now probably just fill this inside hub with evapo rust. Just fill this up. Uh, to attack that, but I'd like to just put the whole damn thing in and do that. Now this one has just a little bit of a, a, a bearing seal on it. This one really puzzled me on my last bike. I did not know how to get it out, but it just pops just like that. Grab a flathead screwdriver and pop it out. This one's probably still good, honestly. Um, now, is the wheel, the wheel's still warm. If I hurry up, if I hurry up, guys, I might be able to just go after this one really, really fast and not have to go through all the heat again. Can I do it? God, can I do it? Can I be a NASCAR pit man right now? Because the whole hub is really nice and warm. I won't say it's hot, but it's warm. I won't say it's hot, but I would say it's warm. Hopefully my, my big old head ain't in the way of shots. I do want you guys to see what's going on. I want to give you guys good shots. I want to give you guys good shots of what's going on. Okay, it should be getting really big now. Come on. There we go. Let's tighten this. Again, just working it both ways. And let's see if it'll go. Oop, I gotta, I gotta move these tools. I gotta move these damn tools. Too much clanging around. Too much clanging around. I'm just gonna dump parts all over the damn place. It's gonna be a gonna be a nightmare. Move this stuff out of the way. I'm not sure. I'm not fine that I might. Yep, it's coming. One more. Boop. There we go. Great call on the heat, guys. Great call on the heat. That is why I love. This group. That is why I like the group. See, we're just helping each other all the freaking time. Now, last time I did a cruddy job of showing you how to get this off of there. So I'll try to do a little bit better job of that. Just loosen it. Basically, you just want to loosen it. It's like this. And then you can watch these little arms. See if it gets smaller as you loosen it and we'll be able to eventually get that darn thing out of there there it's collapsing in upon itself just like that 
it's tricky doing all this man live. Is this a different challenge for me for sure? There's our second bearing. You know, we could probably reuse this one. <laughs> Just kidding. We're not gonna reuse that one. We're, we're not gonna do that. But yeah, so that's that, man. Boom, bearings are out on this wheel, just like that, the blind bearing puller. Or, if you prefer, the hammer thingy. Let's call it the hammer thingy. And yeah, this is all gonna clean up. Again, I wanna submerge this whole darn thing in evaporust and just see how good we're gonna get it. I don't think that's gonna harm that brake lining at all if we do that. I do have my rim strip here. I'm just gonna pull this out. Not gonna be reusing that, but this rubber stuff can be Kind of useful, so I wouldn't throw it away. Um, keep it. Now, let's take a look at the inside rim. Let me give you just a little bit more elevation. How bad is it? It's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. It's not that bad at all. Yeah. Okay, what's going on? Wire wheel's too soft. I used a bit of copper slip grease to refit a bearing. We'll stop it seizing in again. Two of the time, get Chemical Guys Sticky Aluminum Spray. You spray it on citrus base so it won't take off clear coat, but it will remove the rust. Look into that. That sounds like an awesome deal. Used five gallons of Metal Rescue. Put it in an igloo cooler. What you do is over four hours, turn the wheel a quarter, get the entire wheel covered, ended up being perfect. You know, an old cooler, that could absolutely work. And I seize, use it aluminum, won't the entire engine. Looks better than yours, huh, Tula? Yeah, this doesn't look bad at all. Um, get there, ooh, look at that nice close up. Yeah, that actually looks really good. I, uh, I don't see anything cray cray. This one edge is a little bit worse in spots, but overall it's not bad. That'll clean up. My God, the 72 was, <laughs> the 72 was a nightmare compared to this, man. This is, this is a dream. Um, this should clean up okay. I, I'm not ready to despoke it and go through that whole, that, that whole process yet. I think we're gonna be able to save this. I, I think, I just, so here, let me show you why I think that. Here's why. So as a test, as a test for my theory that I could use um, evaporust to clean this wheel, I went and got my old spokes from, actually let's go over to this camera because this camera is a little bit better light. I went and got my old spokes that were rusty and filthy. They, they were filthy. And I put them in evaporust. Here, let's see. They've been sitting in here again. But they actually cleaned up good enough. And like I just put them in evaporust and they're, and they're clean. You know, they're clean. I can like buff out each one of these, but the whole bag is right here. And they all came out really, really clean. Um, so I'm optimistic that if I submerge that whole wheel, like here, here, you can see these. Get that to focus. You know, they're not chrome. You know, they're not shiny, but it's not, but this is the apocalypse bike, right? Um, this thing doesn't have to be crazy shiny. I'm, I'm going to use a lot of matte colors on it. Um, so I think it's going to be okay. This is about as far as we need to go on this wheel tonight. Until I find, you know, a proper tool to uh, submerge those things. So awesome. Mike, man, you're, you're killing the chat. This is awesome. Got all kinds of good stuff going on. Fantastic. I'm loving this. Um, and also, man, we got some viewers here, too. I mean, do not forget, if you have not joined um, the Facebook community yet, you know, Facebook Keep On Wrenching Community Group. You know, hang out, take the conversation even further, share pictures of what you're working on. You know, um, people are posting questions. Mike, he's in there posting a bunch of parts that he's got for sale. Maybe, maybe you've got, you know, stuff that you need, you know, and, uh, or you got stuff to sell. You know, no, there, there's no member. Oh, we got one, Julian. Julian, let's get you in there. You're in, buddy. Thanks for joining. Awesome. 
Let's go to the home page and let's see what's been going on here. Uh, oh, the podcast. This would be a perfect opportunity for me to tell you about the podcast. Um, this was a lot of fun. And it, it really, they asked a lot of great questions about kind of how I got into all this stuff. Um, so go listen to it. Um, it's Five Dirty Bikers podcast. All right, fivedirtybikers.com. And, uh, you know, we talked for about an hour. And, you know, they just, it was a great conversation. We talked about kind of how I got into it. Um, we talked about some of the nuances of Honda bikes. We talked about how desirable Honda bikes are. We talked about possible ways to get younger riders in, you know, to everything. So I, please go listen to the podcast. And I, I think they got a really cool thing going on. So when you go and listen to their podcast, if you could go give them a, a, a positive star rating, give them five stars on the, on the uh, podcast, that really helps them a lot. Um, so please go do that. A really good group of people there. Um, and I had a blast. Um, I, I was amazed when they reached out. They had seen some of the YouTube videos and things like that, and they just wanted to have a conversation. So, um, you know, go, go learn how I kind of got into all this stuff. And um, I don't know, have fun. Hopefully some of you have listened to it. If you've listened to it, um, you know, let me know. What'd you think? I, I thought it was kind of fun. I thought it was kind of a, a, a fun deal that we had going on there. All right, let's get this wheel out of the way. That only stunk up the place just a little bit. This rear wheel's in a little bit different shape. So there's not, there's no spacer. There's rock hard grease. That's never good. And it looks like, it looks like there is a bearing on this side, on the other side. So let's dive in. Let's get, get going on these. Um, these are going to be a 17 millimeter bolt. Okay. Now <laughs> these are flattened. Okay. There's a little locker on these. Let's see if I can give you a better look at this. Uh, there's a little locker on those that you're going to need to remove before you go diving into this. Let's see. You want to make sure I'm not missing your chat. Perfect. All right. So Mike was the last guy who chatted. If I'm wrong, the whole world is broken. Well, we're gonna try to get these off. So once you bend off these lockers, these little locker tabs, you're gonna be able to be able to go after this, okay? Now, some of these are a little nicked up. Let's see if we can get this. Oh, that took everything. That took everything I had to get that. That took everything I had to get that one. So we got one. This one's really mucked up. This one. Doesn't look much better. Let's get at it. Come on. Oh, that one wasn't as bad as that first one, so that's good. Now, can I get a socket over this one? This one's, it's bashed up. Might have to get the old Dremel out. Or, I mean, I can try it with a, just a regular flat. See if I can get it. Lean into it. Oh, it turned. Got it, and this should be the one. I think I broke this one loose earlier. Yep, so we got them all. They came out. That's really good. That's good to see. Let me pull this off just like this. I'm curious if any of you guys checked out, checked out that podcast because that was kind of like a fun highlight of my week um, was being able to do that. Love to hear what you guys thought if you have listened to more of their stuff. Um, I, I kind of, they, they're kind of in my rotation now. I'm kind of listening through uh, some of their shows, The Five Dirty Bikers. It was kind of fun. And honestly, it was just cool to, for somebody to be like, I don't know, recognizing kind of all that work that went into that. <laughs> you know, and they were like, damn, dude, what the hell? You didn't ride and you tore apart a motorcycle and now you ride. <laughs> and uh, it was just a really fun conversation. We covered a lot of ground. I'd love to hear what you guys thought of that. Or if it's in your queue. All right, yeah, these are uh, pretty pretty bad. These, these bolts here, they're, they're dinged up pretty good. But I think we'll be able to get these out because at least they're free. We got them free. No embarrassing moments um, of fighting with a bolt for two hours tonight on the live stream. So that's a big plus. 
gonna take these all four of these off. This one is really the worst of the bunch. This one's actually a little oblong. I might have to rob another one from one of the other wheels I have. Um, I hope this isn't wrecking the post at all coming out of here. That would really suck. I don't think anic should be used for anything except bolt threads and only if needed. What were we talking about anic's doing? Let's see, there we go, got it. Yeah, these bolts are in really bad shape. Wonder what would cause them to be in such terrible, terrible shape. Either way, what we gotta do is we gotta remove the sprocket before we can get to that bearing. Well, not technically, but I wanna clean, I, this all has to come apart, right? So I'm just doing it all now. So here's two, here's your lockers, your locker strips. All right, don't lose those and do not forget to put those back in. All right, Joey, welcome to the stream. Good to see you, buddy. And now we need our snap ring pliers. The other tool, one of the other top five tools that you're going to need when working on these bikes. All right, get my snap ring in here. And oh, I gotta give you a little elevation. This is an exciting moment when we get to use all these fancy tools. What you been doing, Joey? How's the week? Is it gonna move? Oh, well, it's a little seized up on this one side. So I'm gonna give it a little tappy tap. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a tap. Just to kind of see if I can move it just a little bit. Ooh. Yeah, it just needs to move. A little seized up, but ain't no good. Julian, no worries, man. Thank you for requesting. Thank you, dude. That's awesome. How'd you find us? How'd you how'd you find the how'd you find the live stream? Did you see it through the channel? Did you run into a video first? How'd you find it, man? I'd be really curious to know. God darn, is this? Wow, my snap rings are not opening far enough. What is going on here? You know, little buggers. You little buggers. Ooh, god darn it. Let me see if I can extend these just a little bit. Get myself a little bit of, a little bit more, and they both fell out. What in the world? I wonder if I can do this. That's a little bit bigger bite on that. Let's do this. I don't know if those other ones are a little bit longer or what the hell's going on. Oh, god damn, I dropped it on the floor. I dropped a black pin on my black floor. That is not good. I found it though. We can all, we can all relax. We can all relax. See if I can get this, man. Don't remember having this problem last time I did this. Must be some kind of an adjust on it. I'll get her this time, I think. There we go. Into the thing. Spread that apart. And it's just not not going quite enough for me here. Come on, man. What am I doing wrong, guys? What am I doing? Nope. Oh, still didn't go. All right. There must be an adjuster here. Internal adjuster. Internal external. Yeah. There's like no more room. Oh, nice. You always listen to the podcast. Oh, that's awesome. Julian, that is freaking great to hear, dude. I am... Thanks for stopping by. That, that, that is awesome. That, like, makes my day. That makes my day. You found it through the podcast. That's so cool. God darn it, anyway. Boy, this is going to start, start aggravating me. Ooh, ouch. Oh, it's so close. It's so close. Oh, had it. Had it. I just needed to lift it just a little bit. Oh, God, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Tula, you had it? Yeah, you had the same problem? Yeah, I see what I got to do. I got to get 
I think I need like a little thinner screwdriver just to lift up this one edge. Just a little bit. But it's moving free. It'll come out. I just don't have enough lift on it. There, I got it. Okay, there, I got it. So, as long as it doesn't go back in, that's my biggest... If it goes back in, I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be really pissed. <laughs> and I dropped my one pin down there. I'm glad to know that I'm not the only one to have this problem. So apparently there must be kind of a wider throw of a snap ring plier available in the marketplace. That's going to give us a little bit more angle to work with here. I'm just going to get it again. Oh, come on. It is so close. So close to out, baby. I think it goes in a hell of a lot easier than it comes out. God darn it, I dropped, that, dropped both my bits out of there again. Oof, the booga. I think we can get it, though. Should be able to work this around. I don't want to chip anything up. Don't want to get carried away now, and I don't want to push it back down. That's the last thing I want to freaking do. I gotta fish this all out. Let's give you a different angle here. So you can see what the hell I'm dealing with here. What am I dealing with? Yeah, Julian, they're funny. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> You're not really sure where they're going with stuff sometimes though. You know, it's kind of like, okay, what do you, where, where are we going with this? Okay, well, oh, we, oh, we went there with that. Okay, cool. <laughs> you know, it's cool. So man, I'm really glad that you, you popped over to check it out. I was hoping that was going to be the case, that some people would come find the channel and, and come partake in the festivities, you know? God, these stupid snap ring pliers, they aren't even holding my bits right now. It's kind of annoying. Go put this in there like that. There, now they're locked in. Now they shouldn't freaking fall out anymore. But again, I'm, oops, I'm going to have the same damn problem that I was having before. Got to get enough pull on it. Oh, there, I have it. Oh, I had it. I had it. I had it. I had it. Okay, I am actually going to grab this, and I'm going to stick this underneath there. And open and pull. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, it's so close. I just need one screwdriver, and I think I'm gonna be able to work my way around if I have another flat screwdriver. You know, let's see if a putty knife will do it. No, my trusty old putty knife isn't gonna do it. Ah, oh, man. There it goes. I'm just trying to work it around here. Should come free here eventually. I gotta put it on the list. I need another set of snap ring pliers. Who, who freaking knew that, man? Who freaking knew that? All right, I gotta, I gotta keep working this with this miserable tool. I wonder if I can get just a little bit more distance if I open these doors. It'll buy me another millimeter. Let's go like that, like that. And put that in the hole there. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm going to need bigger snap ring pliers. That's what's going to be on my Christmas wish list. I think for sure. God damn, I thought this was going to be the easy part tonight. I thought this was going to be the easy part. Never is. Never is what you think it's going to be. Who was saying that? Somebody was saying that in the in the group and like yeah it's never what you think the the problem you have that day is never what you actually think it's gonna be man i gotta expand that but i just cannot get this thing to go any wider i just can't get it to go any wider guys it needs to open up wider all right so i'm gonna try what i did what i did was i just kind of unlocked it i pulled these out as far as i could just to get a little bit more distance lock it Hold them in place with my fingers so they don't fall out. Like 
like that and try to drop them in there. See if that can get me just a little bit more reach on it. Just need a little, I don't need much. That's the thing, I don't need much. Come on. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. Oh God, and I almost dropped this one back under here. Oh my God. Why is this being such a pain in the ass tonight? There we go. There, I had it. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. You little booger. I'm going to push that one there. And can you believe I do not have another freaking... Um, yeah, in the gap and spread. I can try, man. I can try it. I'm going to go this route, though. We're all wrong ones. I'm going to go this route. I'm going to try this. This might get me a little bit more. I got a pair of needle nose here. That might get me a little bit more. Oh, they're too sharp. Or they're not sharp enough, one of the two. Oh boy, cow yeah. I really don't want to mar up the hub. I gotta find my bits again. I gotta keep doing this. Gotta keep trying. That's the thing, man. You just gotta keep, keep freaking trying. Oh my God, these bits are gonna kill me. Let's try that. Let's try this. Get in there, and you get in there, and we're gonna pull you open. Okay, I'm gonna grab my other silver big one to do it. Who was it? Roger in the UK. He always said he always enjoyed watching people struggle. He's like, it's fun to watch people struggle. I'll try it with the needle nose maybe. Oh, Tula freaking Tom, you're a goddamn genius. Now, where the hell did that go? I heard it fly across the room. I heard it. <laughs> there, I see it. I see it. Tula, great call. So what I actually did on that is I got my um, needle nose in one side, in one hole, and I leaned it down onto the edge of this one. And that got it enough. That got it enough. I wasn't able to get it in the holes, and I wasn't able to get it on one, or like in between them. I couldn't get it to stay there. It's kind of round, not flat. But I got it by going in one hole, and then pushing out that way, and there it popped right out. Bam! Tula, two for two tonight. All right, now, with that out, now I'm trying to remember. This is a big ass washer under here, if I remember right. Yep, there it is. There's our big ass washer that goes there. Hey Les, how are ya? <laughs> Misery loves company. <laughs> very, very true, man. Very, very true. Les, great, thanks for joining us, man. Awesome, okay, that feels really, really good. We got that, we got this. Where's the other lock? Here's the other lock right here. I'm gonna grab my four bolts or my four nuts. Get those over here. Keep all that shit together. Now this should, this should come out of here. What are the odds that it will though? Uh, Cause I gotta polish this hub. Oh yeah, it's gonna move. It's just, it's gonna be stubborn though. Can already feel it. I might just go and tackle the bearing first while I let all of this sit. So I'm gonna hit this with deep creep. I'm just gonna let this sit while I work on this other part. I think that's gonna be best bet. Awesome. So we'll just let that sit. Now we gotta get this ring out. All right. So we gotta get this little ring out. And this is a fun stream, man. I'm having 
I'm having a blast tonight. This is great. So I need my, I'm going to do a couple of taps here. So I got a couple bolts. So I'm just going to tap this out here real quick. It's like one size bigger than the existing hole. So I'm just going to quick tap this out. This is going to help us get this thing out because you got to spin this out and tapping it seems to be the way to go. Uh, let's try this one. Let's see if we can get this one. It's pretty shallow. I don't want to go too deep. I might have went too deep on that first one. So I'm going to just come back out. It's really soft. And I have a couple bolts that should work. Keyword is should. Keyword is should. Yep, that's going to work. Get this one to go in. Just like that. Oh, where's my adjustable wrench? Sure, it's a freaking 10 millimeter, but whatever. There. Get this to go in. So basically, this will be our little lever that we can use to, to turn this thing out of here. Just like this. And I, before I did this, I made sure that these bolts match that tap. So I know I have the right tap for the right bolts. I think that should be good enough. Don't want to go too deep. Then what I want to do is I need to look around, find my giant screwdriver. And get this really low on here. Kind of move these tools because otherwise they're going to go all over the floor. And that's not going to be fun for anybody, especially anybody trying to trying to sleep upstairs <laughs> while I'm doing all this monkey business down here. Hopefully, we don't just uh, just d desire anything. It might be. It might be. I don't know if it's uh, it's there or not. Let me look. Oh, there is a little tap in there. Goddamn tool of three for three tonight, buddy. Three for freaking three, baby. Let's drill that fucker out. Let's do it. Let's drill it out. And what Tula is talking about are these little punches. Let me see if I can give you a look at it. There is one right here. See this where my finger is, this little mark? That needs to be drilled out to make this a hell of a lot easier. I don't see another one. Around the edge, just the one. There's just one right there. So let me see if I get a good angle on it. Uh, Tula, most valuable player for the night, for sure. Hey, cool, focus came back. Just real gently drill it out. Don't have to go crazy far. Just enough. I think that's enough. Yeah. Let's see if we can get it. Yep, there we go. Just like that, it came out. Thanks, Tula. Uh, it's coming out. It's coming out. And the pins seem to be holding, which is awesome, which is great to see. And these should be able to be used again and again and again and again. But once I get them out, I'm going to actually take them a little bit deeper, so a little bit more solid. So. Bam, and there's our bearing, and there's the retainer. That is out of there. Beautiful, beautiful. Making progress, making progress on this. What day is it? October, what is it? 15th, 14th, 13th? What the hell day is it? I'm going to go ahead and grab my tool again, and I'm just going to go deeper into these while I got them here. And uh, I don't know, just to make them a little bit stronger if I ever need to dive back in here, which I'll need them when I put it back in for sure. Just give me a second. This is you know pretty straightforward. We've done a bunch of these. Just gonna tap this out. Ooh, ouch. It's really crazy. I, uh, so I, I remember I told you guys I, 
basically a drill bit broke and bashed in and drilled into my finger. And it's so crazy, man. My whole finger is numb on this side all the way through here. And it like just does these shooting pains sometimes. Like if I hit it just right. And uh, that was one of those moments, man. Whoo, that, that shot all the way up my arm. All right, so we got those done. So, oop, I'm just gonna go ahead and put these bolts back in here for now so that they're there. These will forever be my rear wheel hub retainer bolts because they work perfectly for this application. And just wanna keep them there, perfect. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh, ah, ooh, almost went down into the sump pump. That would have sucked. Okay, so there is our bearing. Our bearing is sitting there and this damn thing isn't gonna move yet. I'm just gonna move on, try to get this bearing out. Should come pretty easy. If again, we apply just a little bit of heat. I'm gonna take my gloves off here for a second because my hands are getting freaking really hot. So while I heat this thing up, we can just chill out for a little while. I think this is the same size. Might be able to go up a size with this one, actually. Let's check. Oh, yeah. So we're going to need to uh, swap this out. Need to use something a little bit, a little bit different. Oh, good. What did you guys work on this week? You out working on anything? I feel like I'm doing all the talking here. Let me know what you've been doing. Fall is officially here for sure. Um, probably going to need to winterize motorcycles here in the next, probably in the next week or so, I would guess. Um, it's coming. It's coming very, very quickly. Where is my bigger adjustable wrench? Aha! I found it. I found it. There we go. Kind of work this off of here. So again, I'm just changing to a little bit bigger end on this tool right here. Just like that. And what did I do with that bigger one? Okay, so I just walked around. I walked around and did that. I did that. And then I set it down someplace. Misery, what we, we all think misery hangs out together, right? That's the deal, right? It was literally just in my hand. It was literally just in my hand. I have no idea where the hell it went. Let's check the, the chat. Less polishing forks and front hub. Glad I'm done. It's a great feeling when you're freaking done with that stuff, dude. It freaking sucks. Takes a long time. Wanna ride my bikes? Yeah, it's gonna be sad when we do that. Put the VIN plate back on the frame and mainly sanded and polished aluminum. It's, I mean, that's like 50% of all the work, isn't it? It's sanding freaking aluminum. That's what we do here. If you guys haven't listened to that podcast, uh, that'd be fun to listen to, but I wanna go see if we got any new member requests. No member requests. Guys, if you haven't joined the Keep On Wrenching community group and you like working on these old Honda motorcycles, come check it out. Come check it out. This is all about this stuff. Michael, you're welcome. You're very welcome. He's going to post a bunch of stuff up for sale. And we've got, let's see, all kinds of projects everybody's working on. Oh, this one was kind of cool. Getting this bike going again. Oh, it's such sweet sounds. Hope you guys can hear that on stream. Yeah, we're all just sharing in the group, man. So if you, you haven't requested to join the group, please join the group. I think it'd be a lot of fun for you to do that. So I still cannot find <laughs> the, the damn thing. What did I do with it? What the hell did I do with it? I still can't find it. 
My first CB350, I did the same thing with the tap and bolts. I did end up getting Motion Pro wheel bearing retainer tool from Common Motor for my latest and future project. Yeah, it would be good. It would be good to uh, get the proper tool. It would be right to get the proper tool. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, Julian, you got me looking for a project also. Would like uh, to gather in, into a project also. Um, yeah. Julian, go, go get one of these bikes. These bikes are freaking um, so damn cool to work on. When you don't lose all of your tools. When you don't lose all your tools, it's pretty fun. What the hell did I do with it? Oh my God, guys. <laughs> oh. It's brutal, man. I was sitting here the whole damn time. Not one of you saw that. Not one of you. Not one of you guys saw that and said, hey, Brian, it's like in the wheel. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the help. All right, let's see if I can find all my other tools so I can complete this project finally. All right, so we just take this. We screw this into position first. All right, so then we get this one, and we get this one, and we tighten this side up first. These two go tight first. Then we can move on to getting this thing to fit, to pull the bearing. And really, man, once we get this, I'm feeling really good about the progress we're making today. Um, making more progress than I actually kind of thought a little bit. I don't know, I'm a little pessimistic sometimes. Okay, I thought it was 17. Oh, this one's gonna be a little bit bigger. Of course it is. And I'm gonna run out of wrenches. If it's bigger than 18, I gotta do this old ghetto style, man. I gotta go and use adjustable wrenches on the whole darn thing. Yeah, it's a 19. Gosh darn it, I need to upgrade my toolkit. Need to get a little bit more range in what I got going on here. So we go back to this. Let's expand this. Just like that. One more turn. I, I, I might as well go tight, you know. If you're going to do it, you might as well go for it. And it's like, I think we should be there. Let's just see. Yeah, it should be. All right, let's get the heat. Julian retracted a message. Did you say something violent? I didn't know you could do that. Didn't know you could retract your messages. This one's gonna be a little different. I almost wonder if I should heat it from the other side. That may help me out just a little bit more to try and do that. But again, tonight, man, it's pretty cool. We've got a steady stream of people moving in and out of this thing. An OEM toolkit, it's got everything you need. Yeah, I don't know. Well, the toolkit that came on the bikes, I'm not sure it's going to help you with that retainer. I don't remember ever seeing a retainer tool like we just dealt with. Or a bearing puller. Okay, good, Julian. You're keeping it civil? That's good. We need more civility in the world. Let's just give this a turn. Heat this stuff up. Trent's in. Trent's bread. We're in. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, man. I, I'm getting curious about what Trent's story is. What Trent's story is. Does he bake bread? You mention bread a lot. You say you always have to go cook bread. But do you actually cook bread? Not sure. Not sure. A 19 millimeter wrench. Yeah, um, yeah. my biggest one I've actually got is an 18 right here. So I'm kind of SOL right now. I think I have up to 22 out in my garage, but I don't really want to go run upstairs and get it. But yeah, the biggest, biggest wrench I've got down here right now is 18.
And I think I have bigger sockets. I think I have sockets down here up to 22, but not wrenches. I think I actually only own like one of those. This is kind of like a fun ASMR kind of a moment on the stream, for sure. Kind of enjoying this. Heating things up. I cannot believe that I've been streaming for almost two hours already. I still got a bunch of stuff I want to do, too. Oh, 19 millimeter wrench in the OEM toolkit. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm losing it. All right, have we heated this thing enough? Have we heated it enough? I'm heating kind of, the, I'm trying to heat, put the heat on this edge um, and then try to heat the hub, not necessarily the bearing. But I mean, it's, it's all getting heated, you know, one way or another. And then once we get the bearing out, we can work on getting the sprocket out. And the sprocket actually looks like it's in really great shape. It's not wore out at all. We'll be able to reuse that. I'll dump that in, guess what, evapo-rust. And it will look amazing. It will look just great. It will look just beautiful. Look brand new. It'll be the nicest part on the bike. It'll be the nicest part on the bike for sure. People will uh, see me drive by and they'll say, that was one damn nice looking vintage sprocket. Did you see that, Joe? Joe, did you see that sprocket? I gotta be careful. I got a cat running around right now and I got a hot heat gun in my hand. Hope he doesn't get any ideas of being curious. You gonna be a curious cat and go and jump on this heat gun when I put it down? I really don't want you to do that, my friend, because I'm quite fond of you. I like the kitty cat. He's good. Stay away from that thing, though. All my tools are going all over the ground again. Not sure. It moved. This one ain't being nearly as friendly. <laughs> I'll heat this one a little bit more. That one's not being quite as friendly as the other ones. Oh, man. Oh, one last obstacle for the night, guys. And then I gotta show you all this Evapora stuff. Oh, uh, Julian. Um, it's a 70 CL350, technically. Um, yeah, technically it's a 70 CB350, a uh, CL350. But I might convert it over to a uh, to a CB350. May convert it to a CL350. I'm gonna see if I can get this kind of heat this hub. So I'm actually going inside here. We'll heat this up a little bit. That I think that might get the hub a little bit more. It's gonna smoke a little bit too. This is gonna smoke a little bit, guys. To give you guys a little bit of elevation. I'm in kind of a tricky spot right now though because camera's here, I'm here. I got a cat who's really curious. He's like very curious as to like what I am doing right now. And I have a hot heat gun in my hand and I just don't want anything to happen to my little kitty cat. If that thing gets hot, I burn myself on that. That is no bueno. No bueno. All right, set this down. See if we can be a little bit more civilized with this this time. It's coming there, it's coming. It moved. Ooh, hot. Or did it? 
or did it? That is the question. This one's being finicky. It looks like it is trying to move just a little bit. This is on the bearing. It is on there. So something's telling me that there's a reason why this bearing ain't coming out. Um, Cause there wasn't a bearing on the other side. My hub really isn't that hot yet. My hub isn't that hot. I just put my hand on it and it's like hardly even hot. So back to the heat. I'm gonna heat this, we're gonna heat this mother hardcore now. Now we're going for it. I mean, this is kind of a big chunk of aluminum here. Welcome everybody into the chat. It's always nice to hear what you're working on for sure. So if you're working on something, let us know, man. If you're hurting for some parts or looking for some tips, there's a lot of really smart people in the room. I'm probably not the, <laughs> the smart one. Um, Tula Tom is hitting three for three tonight on tips to keep the progress moving. Um, and other people are chiming in with tips on other projects. So don't be shy in the chat. Don't be shy in the chat. Kind of one of the reasons why I kind of, uh, why I enjoy doing this is the live chat. It's just a lot of fun to kind of hear in real time while we're working on some projects like from you guys. That's what's kind of fun. Yeah, I try to get the sprocket off first. Yeah, this, this bad boy should get really hot. I, I'm gonna trust you on that, Tula, for sure, because you are the king. You are three for three tonight in everything. I've come a long ways on here, so let's just see if I can get it hot enough by getting it, by heating it all through here. It's still not that hot. We'll give it another minute or so, and then we'll, then we'll do it. Oh, Trent, you're fun too. We just got fun people. We got nice, I, th I think we got a good group of laid back people in here, you know? I don't think any of us are taking ourselves too seriously. I think we have all been there, kind of done that. No, you know, got a little bit of experience, but not enough in some areas or something. And I just think uh, we got a good group. Everybody seems really chill. I really, really like that. Love that about this group. Yeah, Tula might be right about having to uh, try to get this sprocket off of here. But this, you know, the deep creep has been going for a little while. You know, that's been resting. I don't think it would have come off if we didn't give that time. I wish I could, like, oh, I wish I had, like, Four arms. If I had four arms, I would really be able to make a difference in the world. Yeah, it should come out with like three, four swings. It should come out. It's, it's risen a little bit, but it hasn't risen enough. I need to find my... Uh, my rubber hammer. Where's my rubber hammer? Let's see if we can give that sprocket a few whales. What the hell is my rubber hammer? Hey, buddy, how you doing? How you doing? Kitty cat's wondering what the hell's going on. That's all good. Where in the hell? What'd you do with my rubber hammer? So we're spending this entire stream, I feel like, just looking for parts or looking for tools, which I usually kind of pride myself in, uh, you know, being somewhat organized. I like being organized. And I will be damned if I cannot find my Ruber hammer when I need it most. Where is the last place that I used said Ruber hammer? I have not used it tonight. Not back 
there. Oh, look what I found, though. Trent, I found your book. Your book was back behind there. Oh, that ain't right. That's just not right. It's got the Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. It was sitting behind the damn thing. Yeah, I don't have a, a wooden dowel, Tula. I don't have a wooden dowel. Do I have a two by four? I got a little chunk of two by four. But both of my hammers are gone, and that's mostly what I'm mostly kind of mad about right now. Is that both of both my hammers are gone. My Ruber hammer is gone. And my other hammer is gone. My normal hammer is gone. So that's like really really, really crazy. Really crazy. I'll take this two by four down underneath here. Give that a couple wax, a little bit longer. Two by four would be a little bit helpful. See now, if I had my rubber hammer, this wouldn't be nearly as freaking obnoxious. It's a moving. I'm just trying to work my way around. There we go. Working my way around evenly. And then all I'm doing is I'm hitting the end of this longer two by four. Okay. And just trying to lift it up just a little bit. Buy your first bike. All right, Trent, motorcycle is the Smithsonian. Is the Smithsonian. I want to buy my first bike. Daniel, buy your first bike. What are you holding on for? Trent, that's a lot of responsibility. That's a lot of responsibility, man. You don't want me talking. You don't want me talking to people about freaking philosophy and stuff or Zen and all that good stuff. I don't think you want that. that. This sprocket is really stuck on there, guys. There, now we're gonna get it though. This method works pretty well. As long as you go slow, you take it kind of easy. You know, don't get it all jammed up on one end. Give her another spin. It's almost off, we're gonna make it. A 125 cc. You should be able to. You should be able to find one of those. You looking for a Honda, like an old Honda, or you looking for like a new one? There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. There's our sprocket, man. And this sprocket is in actually really good shape. It's in really good shape. One note on the sprocket: the flat side goes out, and the side with the indentations goes on the other one. Keep on wrenching, a treatise on motorcycle maintenance with life lessons by BB Matson's. Oh my God, <sighs> that's scary. I don't know about that. Should I buy a Yamaha YBR or a Suzuki GS? Daniel, uh, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, this is a great question for chat because I only have owned Hondas. I have only owned Hondas. Not saying that I won't delve into some other things someday. But for the most part, yeah, look at these. These things are seized in there too. That's gonna be another process to get those out of there. All right. Well, it just, the, the fun just keeps going. Now we're gonna do tool. We're gonna, we're gonna take, take the tool tip, man. We're just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, dedicate, I'm gonna create a segment that's called tool tips. And I need a sounder that is gonna do that. I am working on trying to get these sounders working on my channel. So like if a new subscriber comes in, it would like do a little MacGyver sounder. But for some reason, um, the, uh, it, it's not picking up when new, new subs come in. And then also there's something called Super Chat. Um, when donations come in, I thought a little, uh, Jack Bauer sounder would be cool, but for some reason they don't, they don't fire, so I sent a thing. But I really like the subscriber one. I, I, I just love that. I love the whole sunglasses thing. And then Super Chat, the Super Chat on YouTube. 
pretty cool. But for some reason, they don't sound. They, they, they don't do anything. But I sent a message over to customer support, and I was like, hey, you know, I paid you 12 bucks a month or whatever it is. Why the hell don't these work? So waiting to hear back on that. We're going direct heat, Tula. We're taking you on on what you're talking about, bro. I trust you. I, I bet it's going to work this time. I bet it's going to work this time. But we're going we're gonna to go. We're going to heat, heat, heat. We're going to go heat, heat, heat. For quite a while here. Heat, heat, heat. Oh, it's starting to smoke. I hate it when it smokes in the house. I hate it when it smokes in the house a little bit. Daniel, you can't buy a new one? Join the club. I can't buy a new one. I think if you're going to buy a used bike, I mean, just, you, you, you know, you can put some time into it. Now, you're going to have to put some time into it, restore some things, fix some things. But, man, I see really cheap bikes, like, all the time online. Are you new? Um, have, you, have you ever bought a bike or ridden a bike? Know people who have bikes? Kind of, what's your story, man? Boy, this bearing is being a bear cat. Ouch. And that hub is plenty hot. And that hub is plenty hot, too. Yeah, it's grabbing it right where it needs to be grabbing it. We can even take a look on the other side. Down in here. Wow, it is. It is nasty. It is nasty. Oh, you can't see that. Damn it. It is nasty in there. I might have to clean that out a little bit first. Let me grab my flashlight. Do I have a flashlight? Yeah. Should have looked at that earlier. The 1970 CB, the gold one that you see, was my first. Let's see. Yeah, look at that. It's nasty down in there. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Tula. I'm thinking, I'm reading what you're writing, man. But that looks pretty, pretty, pretty nasty in there. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. We'll grab some product, spray it down in there. My deep creep's dying. Looks like it's actually kind of rusted. Rusted inside of there. It's no good. It's no good. I mean, that's a lot of... That's a lot, a lot of oomph going on on here. I, I could, Julian, I could totally hit it from the other side. Um, that is another option for sure. I'm not sure I'm going to make a ton of progress. Either way, judged by how filthy that looks. I'm going to try something. Just try it. I'm turning the wrong things when I'm trying to turn the other things. And it should be right. It should be right. Like I'm wondering if maybe, yeah, but there's nothing to really hook up on, you know? There's like, I'm thinking like, am I pulling on the wrong part? But there's really, not another part that you can really pull on. That's what she said. Yeah, it looks it's pretty rusty down inside there. And there was not a bearing on this side. You know, it, it was gone. It didn't even exist. So, uh, It feels like it likes to move, but it ain't moving, guys. It ain't moving. Oh, let's see. 
Yeah, I don't remember who said it on the on the Facebook group. They're just like, yeah, you never really know what the hell you're gonna run in. Like, things that you think are gonna be really easy end up being the hardest thing to deal with. Oh, now that whole thing. Should come out of here now, Jesus Christ. Now what, is this thing stuck in here? No, oh, Jesus Lord. Good Lord. Let me flip this over. Ugh. What the hell's going on here? Yeah, it is. It is right where it needs to be. It is right where it needs to be. But yeah, that is one hell of a mess down in there. That is one hell of a mess down in there. It is rust, 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 rust. Ugh. Heartbreaking, man. All right, well, what I think I need to do is actually, what I think I need to do is actually just let this sit for the night, um, kind of in a bucket of evaporust. And I don't think I've got anything quite big enough to do that. There, that's what I want. I just want to get my tool back out of there. Boom. Hmm. That sucks. Let's try one thing. Let's try one thing. So I'm kind of up on these pegs. Or, oops, sorry. I'm gonna give you a little look-see up just a little bit. So we can set it down on these pegs. We might be able to get it something in there to hit that. Is my punch, I don't have my hammer. I don't have my real hammer. This is driving me absolutely batty right now. What did I use it for? It must have left these premises. I think it left these premises. It's got to be out in the garage. But I'm wondering. Just wondering if I can hit this a few times and get it to move. Because at least, at least the other one isn't in here, right? It's crazy too, because the bearing still moves. The bearing still moves. It spins. I've seen if some like direct pressure would move it at all. It does look like it's moving though. Just very, very, very slowly. I'm wondering, God damn, if I had a dowel, a dowel would be, would be perfect. Just a round dowel would work. I have that old sanction, but I think that old sanction is uh, too wide. Or the pipe, I think that would be too big. Hmm. Pondering, pondering. Wish I had a real hammer with some like weight behind it. That would help a ton. I don't want to slide into the hub. to see. It's really tough to see, man. Uh, use an extent. Oh, an extension. Do I have a long extension? Uh, possibly. Mm, that's about as, this is about as long as I can get. Let's see which one's longer. This one's like two millimeters longer. You know what? 
That freaking did it, dude. The extension did it. Who said that? Dr. BJS. That was it. The, this is moving it. Got a little bit of heat, a little pressure on it. And the hub is still hot, too. The, the hub is still pretty warm. This is moving it. Ooh, boy, that look. Oh, my God. Fell out. Boom. There she be. There she be. Boy, that was a tough one to get out. That was a toughie to get out. We got it. Thanks, Dr. BJS. That was awesome. I'm going to say BJS, okay? BJS. Maybe it's BJ's. BJS. All right, Trent's bread, go cook some damn bread. Sweet nothings, miss you already. I miss you every day. Every, every you know, the, when I wake up in the morning and I look out the window and I see those rays of sunshine, you, you truly are the first person I think of. I think of Trent. I, I think of you. You're like rays of sunshine. Thanks so much for joining the stream, man. Love it. Go cook that bread. Go cook bread for humanity. Go cook that, cook that bread for humanity. Good call, we got it. We got it, baby. I think that's good on this hub for tonight. Cause I'm kinda done. This one's not as rusty, it's just dirty. Holy crap, is this one dirty. Holy buckets, is it dirty. So, that's good, that's good to go. I think we're good there. Yeah, that bearing was junk. Pure junk. Junk. Let's head back over here. Let's see what's going on over here. Ah, see, that's why you wear gloves, because otherwise all this is going to be over your damn hands. And uh, it's not going to look too civilized. Mike. How you doing, buddy? Uh, oh, yeah. Let's check the thing. Let's go pop over here. See what's going on. No new member requests. Oh, God, sadness. Sadness is seeping in on me. Nobody wants to join our, our, our fun little group. Oof, the booga. Getting tired, man. How time is it? 10, 13. Oh, let's see. Yeah, goddamn, I got comments coming in on YouTube. I got stuff happening, man. This is kind of cool. All right, what should we do? We went through that. We got the bearings out. That was really the main goal for tonight. I was going to do something tonight, but I'm not sure I got the stomach for it. I think I'm going to have to wait. I think I'm going to have to wait. Um, I do have this one thing we can look at, though. So let's... Um, I kind of got a little bit easier way to do something. A lot, lot neater as well, I think. A lot more neat. So when we're looking at the, all these parts, and we're trying to clean rubber parts, just get a freaking Ziploc bag and put your Dawn and hot, hot water in it. Throw it in a container and let it sit for a week and just agitate it every once in a while. So I left on a work trip and I came back to these parts that were just kind of sitting in Dawn. Now these were filthy, filthy, filthy parts. Oh, Julian, you got to go. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Julian, have to go tonight, but I want to thank you for the stream. Looking forward to watching tomorrow. Thanks again. I have a great night and reminder of your stream. Reminder of your stream. Awesome. Thanks, Julian. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, I'm super glad that you found the, 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 the whole YouTube channel and the stream. Um, you know, through, you know, the, the five dirty bikers, cause that podcast was a blast. And, uh, if you guys haven't, haven't, haven't gone and checked that out, please do. Um, it was, um, really a good time. So hearing that you, you found the channel through that group is pretty badass. So thanks so much for stopping by, stop by future streams. You know, I'm trying to stream at least once a week, um, as you know, winter maybe rolls in and things slow down a little bit. Uh, I may be able to stream a little bit more, but also I'm going to try to get back into making some regular videos as well. So um, videos, live streams, all that stuff. We'll keep it going. Uh, but again, if you guys want to hear the latest podcast, 
um, there I am right there. And uh, you can uh, go listen to that. Go listen to the episode on 5DirtyBikers.com. Um, that's pretty cool. So, Mike, uh, I have a Cornstar, Constar aluminum wheels for my CM400. Uh, hey, I joined the group. Yeah, I know you joined the group. I know. I, I approved you. I, I, I approved you into the group. I know you joined the group. Um, are you selling those wheels as well? Is that what's going on? Again, I would just encourage you to, you know, post about the things you have to sell. But then if you have more things to sell, try to post the other things you have to sell in the comment of your original post so it all stays together in one thing and people can engage within that one post. That would be amazing. All right. So look at all these rubber parts. So these have just been in Dawn for, you know, probably three, four days. And we barely have to really touch these. Uh, a nice wipe with a microfiber is going to be all that they really require. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and just put them right back in the Ziploc bag. And then I'm just going to fill the Ziploc bag. Like not fill it, but I'm going to put a bunch of Armor All into the product, into the bag. And then, um, and then yeah, we will... Um, let these soak in armor all for a while and all of these different rubber parts are going to be as good as new. Um, I just thought the, the Ziploc bag actually makes a hell of a lot more sense um, when we're working through all of this stuff. So uh, maybe that's where I'll kind of cap things off tonight is just kind of working some of these parts. I don't know. I mean, this is, there, there's nothing too exciting happening here. Uh, but again, all these parts will come clean and uh, they can just go right inside of the bag. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab a little microfiber towel and just start kind of wiping these parts down really, really easy. I have a 16 rear, 18 front stock on the Cornstar wheels. I'll be honest with you, Mike, I don't even know what that is. I don't know what Cornstar wheels are. I, I, I plead ignorance on that. I, I don't know what that is. Again, it's a, uh, Hondas are my hobby. And honestly, I've actually only ever owned Hondas. That's pretty much it. Yeah, the Ziploc, this, it just, I was amazed when I came back from my work trip and I looked inside the bag, I was just like, holy crap. Those parts are freaking clean. They're like totally freaking clean. Now I can just touch them up, throw them back in the Ziploc bag. And then all I'm gonna do, and then I can just like kind of slush this stuff around. I don't have to use nearly as much product as I was using before. And all the dirt is like literally just falling right off on this. Like they're all really, really good. Man, and you can really tell the parts that were in the fire. Ooh, you can tell the parts that were in the fire. Cause I got like, you know, parts for, you know, three different bikes at least here right now that I'm working through, but I'm just oop, knocking off as much of this as I can. Oh, there's my front wheel spacer. I don't want to lose that. I just knocked that on the ground. I'll put that in there for now so I don't lose it. Got all these little boots, every little piece of rubber, like every one of these darn rubbers are, you know, 10, 15 bucks. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's pure money. It's money, money, man. Yeah, there's some grease on that one. That, that probably need to be washed just a little bit more, but you know what? Here's another one of the fire pieces. See how it's all uh, light ain't quite as good there, but Mike, look at the pictures I posted of my bike, Constar Wheels, 79 Honda motorcycle. We'll do that here in a second. Saw you armor all tip in the last live vid. Never thought of that either. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah, it just seems so much freaking easier. <laughs> Then filling up those little compartments. In one of the other streams, you know, I, I used the armor all and I just had that little plastic box and uh, I filled that plastic box, but I, I kind of got a little frustrated because I was wasting a lot of product. Um, I didn't need that much product in order to do that. So it was nice to just save a little bit of product. I don't think I'm gonna need quite as much now to work my way through all of these other parts. And again, like each of these, oh God, oh God, oh God, stuff's falling. Like it's probably five bucks. This little freaking rubber piece is five bucks. Five bucks is five bucks, man. Five bucks is five bucks. 
and it adds up. It adds up a lot when you can save that stuff. Spokes, yeah, spokes. Spokes are no joke. Um, not my favorite thing in the world to do, respoken wheels or even just cleaning spokes. Cleaning spokes sucks too. Just takes time. It just takes so much time um, to do all of that. One little spindle at a time. But we're going to be doing that because I got a full set of old spokes that we need to go through and try and clean them up. It's going to happen. We're going to have to do it. There's no avoiding it. You know, I was doing an inventory of all the stuff that we have in this little shop right now. And man, I probably have enough to do two bikes. You know, um, among all of it, I like so there's probably enough. I think the only thing I'm missing is I'm missing one chain guard. I only have one chain guard. And I think I have a full set of spokes. I've got plenty of handlebars. I got, I got, I, I got a lot of stuff down here. I think there's enough here for two bikes. I've got two engines. Um, so that's kind of the plan. The more I keep thinking about it, I'm just kind of like, well, why don't I just do these last two bikes? Just focus on that. Um, I've got most of everything. It wouldn't take that much, I don't think. Yeah, like look how clean these are. These, these look absolutely fantastic. Yeah, they're just great. Loving this. Love restoring this, like these old rubber parts. Like, who who would have thought that that you would take so much damn pride in restoring, you know, little rubber parts like this. You know, but they're like malleable again. They have moisture to them. Um, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy beans. All right, throw this all in there like that. Now I can get this out of here. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dirty water, dump that in there. Don't need that, but I'm going to need that container again. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. Mike, you have a chain guard for what? It has to be for a C, for a CB350. It needs to be for a for a Honda Twin CB350 CL350. I need to seal this up. So I just dumped a bunch of armor all in there. Yeah, it's not going to fit that 79400. You got to find somebody who's got a 79400. And then see, I'm just going to shake this bag up just like this. You know, Mike, what, what you should do is honestly just open up an eBay account and start selling stuff on eBay. You could probably sell those parts pretty damn easily. Look at how much easier this is, guys. Look at how much easier this is to deal with. Then, you know, before I was like wiping each part, you know, and really all you want to do is you want to get all the rubber pieces, you know, doused and cleaned. And now we've got them all in here. Bam, they all have a really nice coat. You guys see that? They've all got a really nice coat. I come down here, I'm gonna leave them in here for a few days, but I'm gonna come down, you know, every time I'm in my basement, I'll come down. I'll just agitate it a little bit, just like that. And boom, then I can just take this, drop it in the, in the bucket just in case the Ziploc leaks. But, you know, shoot, man, there's, there's probably a couple hundred dollars worth of rubber parts right there. Um, you know, yeah, dude, eBay. eBay is where you want to go. Um, if you got all these parts, eBay is going to be where you want to go for sure. So I kind of like that. I like that uh, Ziploc bag. Let them soak, Dawn. And the, oh, one thing I did do is I, I swapped the water out a few times. So the first one, I let it sit like overnight. Really hot water, Dawn came down, dumped out the water, put fresh, really hot water in Don. So I rotated the water about three times and just agitated it and then let it sit for like three days, came back. Now we're at where we're at, where we dumped it into the armor all. And I think we're good. So yeah, what else? I, I don't think that there's much more that I care to dive into tonight. Um, it's getting pretty late. It's 1030. I got a hell of a day tomorrow. You probably got a hell of a day tomorrow. Um, but this has been really, really fun. We maintain, we had a really good chat tonight too. Um, it was really fun uh, to be able to do that. So I guess just in closing again, um, guys, go listen to the podcast on 5dirtybikers.com. Um, that would be freaking amazing. 
Um, I had so much fun on that podcast, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, kind of what, how you thought that went. Five Dirty Bikers podcast, go look that up. And if you haven't already, man, sign up. You know, go get into the uh, Facebook group. That's the other thing. Keep on wrenching community group. We're up to 28. Who thought we would have got 28? I mean, we launched the, the um, Facebook group, what, two streams ago? And we're just slowly bringing people into the group. Um, go and uh, join that group, join in the conversation. Uh, yeah, just be a good community member and all will be right as rain. I'm actually really tired. <laughs> I'm tired. Um, we got the bearings out tonight. Um, we got all those rubber pieces taken care of. Um, yeah, no problem, Mike. Thanks for, thanks for coming aboard. And uh, we actually made a lot of progress on quite a few things. So. Um, let's see, we introduced uh, the weekend project. So for those of you who didn't see it, I'm going to try out this cheapie and I'm probably going to do a little bit of a video on it just to see, like, are these little $50 hand sandblaster guns worth the crap at all? Um, we'll find out. I'm going to do a little video on that. Um, God, what else did we do? We did some other stuff too. Oh, we tapped a, a bunch of holes. <laughs> we tapped a, a bunch of holes uh, for our, our fork ears. That was the other thing that we did. We jammed on this. So we got these fancy, 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 you know, fork ear covers. I got to sandblast all this stuff. So I'm probably going to try that sandblast gun to sandblast these and get these ready to go for paint. Um, but we had to drill and tap all of this stuff. So that was all good. I've got a lot of sanding to do, just like a lot of you in the comments. If we're going to put those forks together, I have to get these done. So that's on a priority. I gotta go to the hardware store, grab some more sandpaper, believe it or not. So um, that is gonna be an objective for this weekend. While I watch the Minnesota Vikings beat the Atlanta Falcons. Right, right. Yeah, I've gotta run. Uh, Dr. BJS, thanks for the tip, man. That totally helped. It got us through that rear bearing. That was awesome. Appreciate the help on that. Um, and yeah, I think we're just gonna call it. I, I'm gonna call it. I'm a little bit tired. Uh, I've been traveling for work <laughs> and uh, yeah. I think we had a good night. I think we had a good stream. We streamed for two hours and 35 minutes and uh, seven seconds. So thanks so much for the support, guys. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Find us on Facebook, the Keep On Wrenching Community Group. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, try be on again. I think it's next Wednesday, 9 o'clock Eastern, maybe a little bit earlier. I'm thinking about bumping up the streams just a little bit. Um, just because I'm not, uh, then I'm not up till, you know, 1 o'clock or midnight, 1 o'clock. Um, anyway. But we'll figure it out, and I might hop on this weekend. But either way, I think we'll see some videos on the YouTube channel, so keep out uh, an eye for those. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching the stream, and uh, we'll see you later. See you, Les. Thanks so much for joining. Just thanks to everybody. And Tula, you're a rock star, dude. You got us through a bunch of this stuff. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys later. We'll see you in the next stream or the next video. Uh, thanks for all the support. It's been a blast.